Today, we are diving into the nostalgic world of 1970s cuisine with a focus on six classic sandwiches that deserve a revival. These sandwiches were household staples back in the day, and they still hold a special place in our hearts. Number one, Sloppy Joes. Sloppy Joes are a beloved sandwich that became a cultural icon in the 1970s, known for their rich and tangy meat filling. The origin of Sloppy Joes dates back to the 1930s, attributed to a cook named Joe at a cafe in Sioux City, Iowa. This dish quickly gained popularity due to its simplicity and affordability, making it a staple in American households. The essential ingredients of a sloppy joe include ground beef, onions, tomato sauce, or ketchup, and various seasonings such as Worcestershire sauce, brown sugar, mustard, and sometimes bell peppers. The ground beef is browned in a skillet, and then the onions and peppers are sauteed until soft. Tomato sauce, ketchup, and seasonings are added to create a thick, flavorful mixture. This mixture is then simmered until all the flavors meld together, resulting in a savory, slightly sweet filling that is spooned onto hamburger buns. During the 1970s, Sloppy Joe's became a popular choice for casual family dinners and social gatherings. The sandwich's appeal lay in its versatility and ease of preparation, making it ideal for busy households. It was also a hit in school cafeterias across the United States, where it was often served as a hot, comforting meal. One interesting aspect of Sloppy Joe's is their adaptability. Over the years, various versions have emerged, including vegetarian and vegan adaptations using lentils or plant-based meat substitutes. These alternatives maintain the hearty, flavorful profile of the traditional Sloppy Joe while catering to different dietary preferences. In addition to its presence in American homes and schools, the Sloppy Joe has also made its mark in popular culture. It has appeared in numerous television shows and movies, often depicted as a messy yet delicious meal that evokes a sense of nostalgia and comfort. The resurgence of Sloppy Joes in the 1970s can be attributed to their convenience and the growing trend of quick and easy meals. This era saw an increase in the number of working parents and busy families, leading to a demand for recipes that required minimal preparation time yet delivered satisfying results. Sloppy Joes fit this bill perfectly, providing a hearty meal that could be prepared in under 30 minutes. Number two, tuna melt. The tuna melt is a beloved classic sandwich that became particularly popular in American cuisine during the 1960s and 1970s. This sandwich combines a few simple yet flavorful ingredients, tuna salad, melted cheese, and bread, typically grilled to perfection. The base of the tuna melt is a well-prepared tuna salad. Traditionally, this salad is made with canned tuna, which is drained and flaked. To this, mayonnaise is added to bind the tuna together, creating a creamy texture. Additional ingredients such as diced celery, finely chopped red onions, and a bit of pickle relish provide crunch and flavor. Some variations also include hard-boiled eggs or capers for an extra punch. The choice of cheese is crucial in a tuna melt. Cheddar, Swiss, and American cheese are the most commonly used varieties. The cheese is layered on top of the tuna salad and then melted to a gooey consistency, which contrasts beautifully with the crunchy bread. The melting process is typically achieved by grilling the sandwich in a skillet or toasting it in an oven, sometimes with the aid of a broiler to achieve a perfectly brown top. The bread used for a tuna melt can vary, but sturdy types like sourdough, rye, or whole wheat are preferred because they hold up well to grilling and provide a nice crunch. The bread is usually buttered on the outside to create a golden, crispy crust when grilled. One key to making a great tuna melt is balancing the moisture content. Too much mayonnaise can make the sandwich soggy, while too little can make it dry. The right amount of mayonnaise, combined with the natural oils in the tuna and the melting cheese, creates a luscious, moist filling that isn't overly wet. The tuna melt was a diner staple in the 70s, often served with a side of potato chips or pickles. It was appreciated for its quick preparation time and the comfort it provided, making it a favorite among families and working individuals who needed a quick, hearty meal. In terms of nutrition, a tuna melt is a good source of protein due to the tuna and cheese. However, it can be high in calories and fat, especially when made with generous amounts of mayonnaise and cheese. To make a healthier version, one can use low-fat mayonnaise, whole grain bread, and reduced fat cheese. The versatility of the tuna melt has allowed it to remain a favorite over the decades. Contemporary variations might include adding avocado slices, using Greek yogurt instead of mayonnaise, 
or incorporating different herbs and spices to modernize the flavor profile. Number three, peanut butter and banana sandwich. The peanut butter and banana sandwich, famously adored by Elvis Presley, gained widespread popularity in the 1970s. This sandwich is celebrated for its unique combination of creamy peanut butter and the natural sweetness of bananas, creating a satisfying and energy-boosting snack. The core ingredients are straightforward. Ripe bananas and smooth or crunchy peanut butter spread generously on bread. Traditionally, white bread is used, but whole wheat or multigrain bread can offer a healthier twist. The sandwich can be made by simply spreading peanut butter on one slice of bread, adding sliced bananas, and topping it with another slice of bread. One interesting variation involves grilling the sandwich. By buttering the outer sides of the bread and grilling it in a skillet until golden brown, you achieve a warm, crispy exterior that contrasts beautifully with the creamy and sweet interior. This method not only enhances the flavor, but also adds a delightful texture. Elvis Presley's version, often referred to as Elvis Sandwich, sometimes included bacon for an extra layer of flavor. This combination of peanut butter, banana, and crispy bacon, all grilled together, became a signature snack for the king of rock and roll, further cementing its place in culinary history. Nutritionally, the peanut butter and banana sandwich provides a good mix of macronutrients. Bananas are rich in potassium, vitamins, and fiber, while peanut butter offers healthy fats, protein, and additional vitamins. This combination makes the sandwich not only delicious, but also a source of sustained energy, making it ideal for a quick meal or a post-workout snack. Another appealing aspect of this sandwich is its versatility. For those with dietary restrictions, it can easily be adapted. Almond butter or other nut butters can replace peanut butter, and various types of bread can be used to accommodate gluten-free or whole grain preferences. Adding honey or a sprinkle of cinnamon can also enhance the flavor, providing a sweeter or spicier note to the classic recipe. The popularity of the peanut butter and banana sandwich in the 1970s can be linked to several factors. Its simplicity and the widespread availability of its ingredients made it accessible to many households. Additionally, its association with Elvis Presley gave it a cultural and nostalgic significance, as fans of Elvis adopted his favorite snack. Number four, egg salad sandwich. The egg salad sandwich was a quintessential component of 1970s American cuisine, frequently found in lunchboxes and picnic baskets. This simple yet satisfying sandwich featured a creamy mixture of chopped hard-boiled eggs, mayonnaise, and often a touch of mustard for added tang. The basic preparation of egg salad starts with perfectly hard-boiled eggs. These are peeled and coarsely chopped or mashed to the desired consistency. The addition of mayonnaise serves as the binder, creating a smooth and creamy texture. Mustard, typically Dijon or yellow, is often included to add a subtle sharpness that balances the richness of the eggs and mayonnaise. Seasonings play a crucial role in elevating the egg salad's flavor. Salt and freshly ground black pepper are standard, but other additions such as celery salt or onion powder can enhance the taste. Fresh herbs like chives, dill, or parsley are also popular, adding a fresh, vibrant note. For a bit of crunch, finely chopped celery or green onions can be mixed in. A common technique to brighten the flavor profile involves adding a small amount of lemon juice. This not only adds a touch of acidity, but also helps to cut through the richness of the mayonnaise. A sprinkle of paprika on top of the finished sandwich provides both a decorative touch and a slight hint of smokiness. The bread choice is versatile. While white bread was commonly used in the 70s, whole grain, rye, or even a crusty baguette can be excellent options, providing a sturdy base for the creamy filling. Some variations include adding lettuce leaves or sliced tomatoes to the sandwich, offering additional texture and freshness. Egg salad itself has been a staple in American diets for decades, praised for its simplicity and nutritional value. Eggs are a great source of protein, vitamins, and minerals, making this sandwich a wholesome choice. The mayonnaise, while adding calories, can be adjusted in quantity or substituted with lighter options like Greek yogurt for a healthier twist. The 1970s saw a rise in the popularity of quick and easy meals, reflecting the growing trend of busy lifestyles and the need for convenient yet nutritious food options. The egg salad sandwich perfectly fit this niche, requiring minimal preparation time and using ingredients that were typically on hand in most households. Number five, club sandwich. 
The club sandwich, a quintessential American creation, gained immense popularity during the 1970s. Known for its triple-layered structure, this sandwich typically includes turkey, bacon, lettuce, tomato, and mayonnaise, all stacked between three slices of toasted bread. The layers are often secured with toothpicks and cut into quarters, making it easily shareable and visually appealing. Originating from country clubs, hence its name, the club sandwich symbolizes a luxurious yet accessible dining experience. It was often served in upscale venues and became synonymous with American culinary culture during the 70s. This sandwich's structure allows for a satisfying mix of textures and flavors, combining the crunch of toasted bread with the moist, savory fillings. The traditional preparation involves layering the ingredients meticulously. The bottom layer usually starts with a slice of toasted bread spread with mayonnaise, topped with lettuce, turkey, or chicken slices, and another slice of bread. The next layer includes more mayonnaise, crispy bacon, fresh tomato slices, and another piece of lettuce, all topped with the final slice of bread. Each layer contributes to the overall taste, ensuring that every bite is flavorful and well-balanced. One of the unique aspects of the club sandwich is its adaptability. Variations can include additional ingredients like ham, avocado, or different types of cheese, catering to diverse tastes and dietary preferences. Some versions might replace turkey with roast beef or use different types of spreads to add distinct flavors. In terms of nutritional content, the club sandwich provides a good source of protein from the turkey and bacon, along with vitamins and fiber from the fresh vegetables. However, the inclusion of mayonnaise and bacon also adds to the calorie and fat content, making it a hearty meal option rather than a light snack. The sandwich's popularity during the 1970s can be attributed to its simplicity and the era's growing trend towards convenient yet substantial meals. It was a favorite in diners and restaurants, often accompanied by French fries or a side salad. The visual appeal of the neatly stacked colorful layers also made it a popular choice for showcasing culinary presentation skills. Despite its straightforward ingredients, the club sandwich requires careful assembly to maintain its structure and ensure an even distribution of flavors. The use of quality ingredients, such as fresh vegetables and well-cooked bacon, is essential for achieving the best taste and texture. Number six, cheese and pickle sandwich. The cheese and pickle sandwich is a distinctive British creation that made its way into American kitchens in the 1970s. The combination of sharp cheddar cheese and tangy pickles creates a bold and flavorful sandwich that stands out for its simplicity and taste. The essential components of this sandwich are high quality cheddar cheese and pickles. Traditionally, English cheddar is used for its sharp, robust flavor. The cheese is sliced thickly to ensure that its rich taste is prominent in each bite. Pickles, specifically Branston pickle, are a staple in the classic British version. Branston pickle is a type of chutney made from a variety of pickled vegetables in a thick brown sauce, offering a complex mix of sweet, spicy, and tangy flavors. In the American adaptation, dill pickles or bread and butter pickles are often used, providing a similarly tangy profile. The assembly of the sandwich is straightforward, but crucial to its appeal. Thick slices of bread, preferably crusty white or whole grain, are buttered on one side. The cheese is layered generously on one slice, followed by a liberal spread of pickles or pickle relish. The second slice of bread tops it off, buttered side out, and the sandwich is often served cold. However, some variations toast the bread or even grill the entire sandwich, slightly melting the cheese and adding a delightful crunch. This sandwich's appeal lies in the contrast between the creamy, sharp cheese and the tangy, slightly sweet pickles. The textural contrast also plays a role with the smoothness of the cheese balancing the crunch of the pickles. The simplicity of the ingredients allows each flavor to shine, making it a beloved choice for a quick and satisfying meal. The cheese and pickle sandwich became popular in the UK due to its ease of preparation and the availability of ingredients. It was a common lunch item, often packed in school lunches or enjoyed as a quick snack. Its introduction to the U.S. in the 1970s came as Americans developed a taste for more international flavors and easy-to-make hearty sandwiches. Nutritionally, this sandwich provides a good amount of protein and calcium from the cheese, along with fiber and vitamins from the pickles. However, it can also be high in sodium, especially depending on the type of pickles used. To make a healthier version, one can opt for reduced-fat cheese and low-sodium pickles.